What's up, guys? I am Jay Bates. And I'm Sean Stone. Do you get email? I get email. Yeah, I, I get email, too. This one is from Richard Spencer. He says, shop lighting. I have a two-car garage with eight-foot ceilings. What do you guys suggest for lighting? Uh, thanks for all the videos uh, and help throughout the years. Well, thanks for that. Um, so there's, there's a couple different approaches to <clears throat> lighting. You and I both make videos, mm -hmm. so lighting is a must. Yes. Uh, and from, so from a video aspect, I've got a tremendous amount of light in here because I don't want to move light stands around. I don't have any dedicated light stands. It's just light in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. The more light, the better in my opinion. But that's not, also, that's not limited to making videos. You just yep. recently upgraded all the lights in your shop. Well, yeah, so just the bulbs. So I've got several four foot, and well, I added, I did add two four foot fixtures, but I had the cool, warm bulbs, and then I upgraded to the daylight bulbs. Daylight bulbs, yeah. And it just makes a total, total difference. Now, as far as the color spectrum of light you choose, um, we, I'm running 6,500K on the Kelvin scale, or Kelvin, whatever. Um, it is the, supposedly mimics daylight as you're outside uh, and for some people uh, it's a little bit too cool a little bit too white bluish hue to it for me I'm I, I like it it doesn't bother me one bit um, <clears throat> whatever you choose for lighting I would really suggest keeping all of the lighting even and mm. also a little bit towards the cool side of the spectrum I would not suggest yellow hue lighting or warmer hue lighting for shop stuff because if you do any staining or if you do any painting or if you do anything that has um where you're trying to really see what's going on really see the appearance then that's going to change it if you put it into another environment it's going to look different than what you initially thought and if, and if any type of stain work or anything like that is going to uh it's going to be a little different on your eyes. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a learning process for me. So when I first got into this, it was, you know, I just threw in fluorescent bulbs and, you know, just went with it. But as I got into the video a little bit deeper, you know, I, I discovered that these daylight bulbs, you know, uh, 6,500K, is that what it is, 6,500K? Depends. If it just says daylight, it could be a different, a couple different numbers. Well, I think there is a scale on the package that said it was 6500k on the ones i've got but so yeah it makes a total difference as far as video goes but also i think it's just great for overall you know shop work absolutely i mean bottom line it doesn't matter if you're making videos for a living it doesn't matter if you're making uh woodworking for a hobby or for a living if you can't see what you're doing then you can't see what you're doing so in my opinion the more light the better yeah but there's a difference between lighting for video and also lighting for work i don't have any standalone dedicated lights here and there that I can move. I've mm -hmm. got some, but I don't use them because it affects the video. And that's one thing that I wish wasn't a situation. If I was out here doing woodworking, it would be, uh, without a camera, it would be a tremendous asset and a benefit for me if I could use dedicated standalone lights like this. This is a mobile fluorescent, and this is one of those uh, bells. Shop, yeah. shop lights, yeah. Yeah, a shop bell you could put anything in and clip it to something, although I don't have the clip on it. Um, I wish I could use these more so than what I'm able to do to the video. Like as I'm, st I'm standing at my workbench right now, it's, it's out of frame right now, but I'm standing at my workbench, all of the lights are on that side of the shop. So if I'm looking at the back side of a board, like uh, if I'm cut, cut something with my handsaw, mm. there's no light over here shining on it. So I'm in the shadow, I'm looking at a shadow every time I do something at my workbench. That wouldn't be a situation if the cameras weren't involved. So right. I would always recommend <clears throat> having a couple of these small lights that you can take around with yeah, you. Yeah, I've got one of those. Actually, on my lathe, I've got a, uh, a, a light there to help, I guess, see what you're doing. Uh, and I can also pos position it in a way when I'm videoing to where it's not the bulb is not shining at the camera. But, you know, as far as working at the lathe, it, it helps out tremendously uh, having a dedicated light source for that particular pro you know, or, or that particular tool. Um, and so I've also got a couple of these shop lights for, you know, different lighting reasons for when I'm shooting pictures or, um, just moving it around the shop in general. So, so the, we, there's also, uh, we mentioned fluorescence. All of mine are T8 bulbs. That's what mine are, T8s. T8s. Yeah. Um, and obviously LED is getting a little bit more popular these days, a lot more popular actually, actually. but at, at the time when I put all of my lights in, it really wasn't cost effective. Um, it's starting to get there eventually, 
Um, so if you're interested in upgrading your shop lighting, definitely check out LED. That's definitely the route mm -hmm. to go um, long term as far as cost savings um, for recurring energy bills. Um, but yeah, more light in the ceiling, the better, in my opinion. Uh, and then also, it doesn't matter how many lights you have, get a couple of these standalone units. Yeah. They're beneficial in, in in a tremendous amount of areas. Yeah, and, and with these uh, bell housings, I mean, you can put LED bulbs in those uh, and r easily, you know, get a cost-effective bulb in. Yeah, yeah very cheap. So. Now, as far as how much light do you need in the ceiling, there are some calculators out there. Uh, I'll post a link if I can find one. I know I've seen one, but if I can find one again, I'll post the link into the, the show notes for this video. Um, I have a 20 by 20 foot square shop, uh, 10 foot ceilings, and it's got one two car garage door. So as the garage door is up, the remaining ceiling that is still exposed in that area, I've got four eight foot banks of lights. Each one of those eight foot banks has four four foot bulbs. And that is on a single circuit. That way when the light or when the garage door is open, I have lights that are not blocked by the garage door. And then that's my main light source in here. And then when the garage door is shut, then I've got two more of those exact same eight foot fixtures with four bulbs each above where the garage door is. And those are on a separate circuit. Yeah, and I've got a similar setup, but I go about it a different way. I've got three runs of, so I've got <clears throat> two, four, six. I've got six four-foot fixtures in my shop. My shop is just a little bit smaller than Jay's just because of the way it's laid out. Um, but I don't necessarily have the bulbs that are when the garage door is open. I don't, there, there are a couple of bulbs there, but the way I run mine, I've got two different switches and the center run is on a switch and then two outside runs are on a switch. And that way I can play with the lighting with the video if I want to get different effects. And also in Jay's situation as well as mine, if you need to work on a circuit, then you can turn off that circuit and also still have light in the shop to work. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's something I didn't think about. <clears throat> yeah. um, I guess... Uh a lot of light in the ceiling don't neglect the mobile can lights and stuff that you can move around the bell lights um, but also placement if you've already got an established shop if you've already got your tool placement pretty much established uh, you also you, you want to make sure that um, you don't have shadow in areas where you're working so if I am uh, at a station my, I say I have my drill press here in my back towards the camera well it doesn't make sense for me to have a light over here shining on my back which makes my shadow go directly into mm -hmm. the uh, what I'm what I'm trying to do so keep that in mind when you do your your lighting placement you don't want them directly up against the wall but you don't want them so far isolated towards the center that way when you go to one of your exterior tools locations mm -hmm. you're not working in a shadow All right that's a good point so yeah that's where the mobile lights come in. Yeah, that's where the mobile lights come in. Yeah. Um, anything else to add to that? I think that's that covers it, I think. That covers it. So you guys take care. Have a great day. If you guys have any other questions, comments, you know, leave them in the description. Send us an email, anything you guys want to do. Until next time, you guys take care and have a good one, and we'll talk to you later. See you.